all of my communication with Satoshi was ever um, via either the Bitcoin Talk forums, which all of that communication is public, or private forum messages, or private emails. Satoshi was always all business. It was just always about the code. My very first message to Satoshi, I asked him, so, you know, is Satoshi your real name? What have you done before? Can you tell me a little bit about yourself? And he just ignored that completely, but came back and said, you know, I'm great to have more experienced programmers helping out with the project. You know, here's a couple of problems that need to be solved. Maybe you can help solve them. In, I think, late 2010, he asked me if it'd be okay if he put my email address on the bitcoin.org homepage, because he had been the primary contact for people. Um, and I said, sure. And he went ahead and changed the web page. But what he did is he, he, he left his name there, but he took away his email address. And so it was just me and my email address who was suddenly getting all of the attention. And I think that was Satoshi's way of kind of saying, you know, you're the, you're the leader of the project now. There was one particular email where he told me that he was going to step away from the project and do something else. He never told me what else he's going to do or that he is doing. I had just been invited to give a talk at the CIA, and I told Satoshi that I accepted the invitation to go speak at the CIA. After he sent that email to Satoshi, telling him that he was planning on going to the CIA, he never heard from Satoshi again. And that was essentially the last time anybody heard from Satoshi. You very quickly get caught up in the question of who is Satoshi Nakamoto? Where did this come from? Who is this person? I mean, this is the 2000s. Information is out there, everything. Everyone knows everything about everybody. How can there possibly be a person that nobody knows who this guy is, but there is a person, or at least they think it's a person, it might be a group, who nobody knows who this guy is. And he kind of appears out of nowhere in 2008 on these cryptography email lists with this system called Bitcoin. He's very active in the early years. There's a lot of back and forth with him communicating with people. It seemed like most people kind of wrote him off. It's kind of like a illusions of grandeur kind of scheme. Halfini, on the other hand, seemed to be really interested right from the beginning. He was a crypto idealist. Like he was not as kind of cynical as many of the other cypherpunks. So he got really into this. He started talking to Satoshi Nakamoto, who he said seemed like some young Japanese American coder. Hal Finney was the first guy to work with Nakamoto. He was a cryptographer. As soon as uh, Nakamoto released it, he was one of the first people to email him back and say, hey, this is interesting. I'd like to work with you. And in the first weeks of Bitcoin, he worked with him back and forth setting up the system. And Satoshi Nakamoto ended up sending Hal Finney the first ever Bitcoin transaction. Any discussion of Satoshi's identity has to go back to the fact that Bitcoin was based on this small number of projects back in the 1990s that only a handful of people knew about, like Hashcash and Bitgold and B-Money. And so you end up with a pretty small group of people who would have known about these projects. People thought Chom, David Chom was, you know, everybody in the cypherpunk movement at one point or another, they've said, well, he must have been Satoshi. Uh, they've all come out and denied it. Probably somebody who started out in the 90s in California with the cypherpunks, somebody who was very, very good at cryptography, who understands encryption and has done a wonderful job of just separating Bitcoin from anything that can identify him. It has been one of the biggest mysteries raging across the internet. Who is Satoshi Nakamoto? Newsweek published an article claiming the man in these images is the Bitcoin founder. The man who created Bitcoin is known as the father of Bitcoin, the online currency now worth billions. When you asked him about Bitcoin and he says, I can't talk about this anymore, he was not referring to Bitcoin. But with me, he definitely acknowledged Bitcoin. I think at this point now he's saying he was confused by the conversation. Clearly somebody thought that we did this as an act of war against Satoshi Nakamoto or Bitcoin. And I want to be very clear that um, I certainly never meant it that way. I have nothing to do with Bitcoin. It was a monster story. How did they figure it out? Oh my God, look at this guy that they named. He's, his name is Dorian Satoshi Nakamoto, living in California, basically hiding in plain sight. It becomes a gigantic media scramble. And then Dorian emerges from his house looking kind of disheveled, looking kind of confused. And 
says he's not Satoshi Nakamoto, says he's never heard of Bitcoin. He doesn't understand. He had one conversation with Leah. She misunderstood what he said. She took it the wrong way. And you probably would have had to have been a cypherpunk to understand all the elements of it that had already been put together. The odds of it seemed very low to me that it was somebody from completely outside that community who happened to know all these different things and put this together and appear out of nowhere. The day that Newsweek's story came out, naming Dorian Nakamoto as the creator of Bitcoin, I got this email from an old acquaintance that was titled, What are the odds? And it's laid out the fact that Hal Finney lives less than two miles away from the known address of Dorian Nakamoto, where Newsweek had found him. And Hal Finney is the number two ever user of Bitcoin, who received the first Bitcoin transaction. He worked on an early prototype of an anonymous currency system. He was a cypherpunk. So how could it be that the purported creator of Bitcoin and this known, confirmed, second ever user of Bitcoin hadn't ever collaborated, that Hal Finney, who was less than two miles away from Dorian Nakamoto, hadn't helped to create Bitcoin? Or maybe he really was the creator of Bitcoin. Maybe Hal Finney was Satoshi Nakamoto. When you look at the Bitcoin white paper, it made reference to a lot of the earlier projects that fed into Bitcoin, but it's very notable that the one project it doesn't refer to is Nick Szabo's Bitgold, which is perhaps the closest precedent and the closest parallel to Bitcoin. I mean, Bitgold is so close to Bitcoin, it's hard not to think that you know maybe Nick is Satoshi. A lot of people will say Nakamoto must be Zabo, Nakamoto must have been Finney. But I don't think he was trying to leave any breadcrumbs out there for anybody to follow. I told my editor about it. He agreed that you found Satoshi Nakamoto. So I got on a plane to Santa Barbara and I drove out to Hal Finney's house. Um, but at this stage, he was already completely paralyzed by ALS. This really awful debilitating terminal illness that slowly shuts down your body while leaving your mind completely intact. And the time when he started to fade in his physical abilities did roughly coincide with the time that Satoshi Nakamoto started to disappear. Now maybe the reason that Satoshi Nakamoto had chosen to fade away was because Hal Finney was physically fading. There have been a number of stylometric studies and you see so many of these similarities between Satoshi's writing and those of Nick's including these little things like having two spaces at the beginning of a sentence and phrases and spellings that nobody else uses. So I talked to Hal as much as I could mostly in a kind of one-way interview because he could really only respond with yes and no answers and he denied being Satoshi Nakamoto. You could tell that he was amused by the whole idea that I thought he was Satoshi Nakamoto. One of the really remarkable things from Nick Szabo's writing in those months before Bitcoin was publicly launched is that Nick, in responding to some comments about a post he had made about Bitgold, actually asked the other people who were reading him if anybody wanted to help him code this idea up into real software that could work. It was never turned into a reality, but when you look at Bitgold, it's, it's hard not to be struck by uh, the similarities between it and, and Bitcoin. Maybe it was a duo. It was Zabo and Hal Finney, and now... It's Hal possible. Finney. Yeah, Hal could have been the coder. Um, I don't know. You know, this idea that, that Hal Finney could have been the kind of ghost coder for Bitcoin, uh, I guess it's possible. Other people kind of speculating on Reddit or other parts of the internet thought that maybe Hal Finney had used Dorian Nakamoto as a, a patsy. If he were ever traced back to Dorian Nakamoto, it would seem like this guy was the creator and Hal Finney would be sort of immunized from it. Everyone else who was involved in the projects leading up to Bitcoin has released their communications with Satoshi from this period. Nick has avoided doing that and essentially went silent in those critical months after Bitcoin was released. You know, when you talk to people face to face and they tell you these things, 
you can get a sense of their being honest. And if Hal Finney actually had a secret billion dollar cache of Bitcoins, he wouldn't have been able to lie to me so effectively about it. In the end, the reasons to believe that this was all just a coincidence began to outweigh the coincidence itself. It's almost like an eel. There is something there, you can see it, but as soon as you touch it, it just slides right out of your hands and you're left with nothing. Anybody who is of any note in the cypherpunk movement, and even outside of it too, has at one time or another been called Satoshi. Hal Finney denied it, Nick Szabo denied it, they've all denied it. Maybe one of them is Satoshi, maybe all of them are Satoshi. It really is a mystery. So you're going to show me that Satoshi Nakamoto is you? Yes. Some people will believe, some people won't. And to tell you the truth, I don't really care. But you can say, hand on heart to me, I am Satoshi Nakamoto. I was the main part of it. Other people helped me. I'm going to come in front of a camera once, and I will never ever be on a camera ever again for any TV station or any media, ever.